Addiction. Addiction is another personality disorder I'm discussing today. The Bible in Psalm 73 verse 26, Psalm 73 verse 26, it says, My flesh and my heart failed, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion forever. So if we are talking about addiction, let's look at some basic definitions. Addiction is a brain disorder characterized by compulsive engagement in rewarding a stimulus despite adverse consequences. That is definition from Wikipedia. Now the state of being enslaved to a habit is an addiction. Addiction is also the act of subjection to psychological indulgence. You know, you indulge yourself psychologically in anything, that's addiction. Addiction can be physical habit forming behavior. The behavior we're talking about can be a behavior whose outcome causes severe trauma in your conscience. Now, addiction is also indulgence in the stimulant that induces psychosocial pleasure. <laughs> now, let me tell you something, folks. Two properties drive addictive behavior. What are the two properties? Number one, reinforcing. This increases the likelihood of repeated action and commitment to a pattern of behavior. You keep on doing things that you ought not to do, that you are sure is not good, that's not right and that you cannot even do publicly, you cannot own to it publicly. The more someone practices a particular habit, the higher the likelihood of that person becoming more passionate with, the with that particular behavior. In this sm small teaching, uh, preaching, whatever you want to call it, you're going to hear a number of things about affliction. Now, some people Looking at intrinsic reward of 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 of, uh, of addiction, they become passionate about a behavior that that that, that cannot be defensive. The, the behavior that's inherently you know positive when it looks when they are considering desirable and pleasurable circumstances or reward. Such a person is drawn most of the time to a world of self delusion. Those who are who are engaged in um, addiction, listen to me, folks. Addiction is a disorder of the brain reward system arising from chronically, chronically high levels of exposure to an addictive stimulus. A lot of grammar, but I'm going to break it down into, into simple uh, statements that you understand. To put it boldly, addiction has very high negative implication. An addiction takes its toll on human life. That is true. Addiction takes its toll on human life. I mean, addiction can make your life waste away. Addiction offers his disciples short-term pleasure for a long-term mystery. I mean, who we want to who we want to engage for a short-term pleasure for a mystery that lasts a long, long time? Let let me come nearer home by mentioning to you examples of addiction. Alcoholism can be a serious addiction. Drug-related intakes like cocaine, nicotine, etc. Serious addiction. The Bible says, For thou this from my inward parts, thou this cover me in my mother's womb, I will give thanks unto thee, for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Wonderful are thy works, and that my soul knows that very well. That's Psalm 139, verses 13 to 14. If God has made you wonderfully, why do you get yourself into addictions? Addiction that destroys your body. Let me mention another addiction, food addiction. The Bible says food for the belly and the belly for food. But God Almighty shall bring to destruction both it and them. But the body is not for fornication, but for the Lord and the Lord for the body. That's what the Bible says about the body. I mean, those of you who uh, who cannot control your appetite when it comes to food, those of you who eat anytime food is offered, whether it's, whether you are hungry or not, food is an addiction. Gambling is another addiction. <laughs> the Bible says, "But those who desire to be rich fall into temptation, into a snare, into many senseless and harmful desires, but plunge people into ruin and destruction." 
And you, that is First Timothy chapter six, verse nine. Another addiction we come to want to mention now is sexual addiction. Sexual addiction. The Bible says, "I made a covenant with my eyes not to look lustfully at a girl." That's Job speaking. Job chapter one, verse one. He said, "Now, but put ye on the Lord Jesus Christ, and make not provision for the flesh to fulfill the lust thereof." Romans thirteen fourteen. Another addiction that is very common is masturbation. For the various counselings we've given people, people come out to say they are they are addicted to masturbation for one reason or the other. That's not right. Because number one, the Bible says in Psalm 73 26, Psalm 73 26, the Bible says, My heart and my flesh may fail, but God is the strength of my heart and my portion. You know, so if you trust in the Lord, for whatever reason that may make you commit the addiction of uh, masturbation, you can have control over it. Then there are people who lie compulsively, compulsive and impulsive liars. <laughs> A lie is an addiction, or can be an addiction in many people's life. The Bible says, Blessed are they that wash their robes, that they may have the right to come to the, to the tree of life, and may enter in it, may, may enter it by the gates into the city. Now listen to me. Without are the dogs, and sorcerers, and fornicators, and murderers, and adulators, and everyone, everyone without exception, that loveth and maketh a lie. Listen to me. Lying is horrible. The scripture I just mentioned, you can check it out in Revelation chapter 22, verses 14 to 15. Yes, Revelation chapter 22, verses 14 to 15. Restive behavior, impatience of control, impatience of restraint, impatience of restless, I mean, impatience of uneasiness, they can also be serious addiction. And that's why the Bible says a man without self control. It's like a city broken into and left without walls. Proverbs 25, 28. Now, negative perceptions all the time can be an addiction. It never, some people always have negative perceptions. Never say anything good with anybody, so to say. Now, listen to me. We can talk about unrealistic perceptions also, which can be an uh, addiction. Unrealistic perceptions include delusions, self-deceit, etc. And these are usually product of laziness. Yes, some people worry a lot. So worrying can be an addiction. Worrying can be an addiction. But the Bible tells me something about worrying. It says, for he has not despised the disease, the suffering of the afflicted one. He has not hidden his face from him but as listening to his cry for help. So instead of worrying, why don't you cry unto the Lord and let it and let God and, and, and let go and let God stop worrying. Worrying as an addiction can kill you. Let me go forward now by asking a question that we're going to answer during this discussion. What is God's perspective about addiction? What is God's perspective about addiction? You know, I'm going to give you a few common examples. Let's take adultery and fornication for an example. The Bible in Proverbs 5, 20 to 21, Proverbs 5, 20 to 21, it says, For why should you, my son, be enraptured by an immoral woman? Why should you be embraced in the arms of a seductress? For the ways of men uh, are before the eyes of the Lord. That, that means there is nothing you can do in the secret that the Lord is not seeing. So why, why do you engage yourself in such things? Why are you addicted to immorality? Hmm. Another one that is common is alcoholism. Alcoholism. Proverbs 21. Proverbs 21. The Bible says, wine is a mocker. Strong drink is a brawler. And whoever is led astray by it is not wise. I wonder why the Bible says whoever is led by it or whoever is deceived by it is a fool. Let's talk about food. Proverbs 23, 20, 21. The Bible says, do not mix with wine bibas or with glutinous eaters of meat. 
He said, for the, for the drunkard and the glutton, we come to poverty. <laughs> so I said all this, the question we now have to, have to address is, how do we break away from an addiction? How do we break away from addiction? Number one, recognize that you have one addiction or the other. Number two, stop justifying it. Number three, trust in God. Trust in God. Number four, run away from the triggers. There are things that trigger addiction. Then seek help. Yes, help is available. Let me mention it, some differences between habit and addiction. Because some want to argue it's just a habit. A habit is a choice that we make. A habit is a behavior that occurs over time because of frequent repetition. When we do something repetitively, our brain does it automatically. It picks it up and does it automatically. Now, a habit can graduate to an addiction. Yeah, when, when something has become your habit and you do it all the time repetitively, it can become an addiction. And guess what? Addiction is a form of idolatry. Check that one in Exodus chapter 20. Whoever commits sin is a slave of sin, John 8.34 says. So when you are committing sinful addiction all the time, then you are a slave to sin. How to confront addiction is what I want to mention now. The primary tool lies in self-control. Self-control is the best tool to confront addiction. Proverbs 25-28 says, A man without self-control is like a city broken into and left without walls. When a city is without walls, that city becomes vulnerable to illegal entrance. Anybody, anything, animals, humans, they can break into that city. The body, the soul, and spirit of a man becomes very vulnerable where there is no self-control. And you know what? Naturally, a man is supposed to have self-control. How am I sure? Second Timothy chapter number seven. The Bible says, For God has given us a spirit not of fear, but of power and of love and self-control. We must exercise the power of self-control at all times because it's a, it's a free gift that God has given us. Anytime you are faced with an addiction, exercise the power of self-control. Let me mention something about work of darkness. Most addictions can be classified as work of darkness. Particularly the things that you do, but you are not proud of. The things that you do, that you cannot do publicly. The things that you do, that incriminate your conscience most of the time. Romans 13, 12. Romans 13, 12. Encourage us to cast off the works of darkness and put on the armor of light. Oh, I didn't say anything about drunkenness yet. You know, drunkenness. Drinking can become drunkenness. A serious addiction where there's no self-control. People start to drink habitually. So people try to, they, they start to drink, you know, socially, social drink, they call it. But eventually, they, they get engaged, they get ensnared, they become enslaved to the habit of drinking. Ephesians 5.18 teach us that, and do not get drunk with wine, for that is debauchery. But be filled with the Spirit of God. <laughs> Be filled with the Spirit of God. Amen. Let me close with this scripture. 1 Corinthians 10.13 1 Corinthians 10.13 The Bible says, No temptation has overtaken you except such as is common to man. But God is faithful who will not allow you to be tempted beyond what you are able. But the temptation will also make a way of escape that you may be able to bear that temptation. Hallelujah. God has given us that strength. You know, if you are suffering an affliction, God has made a way of escape for you. The question is, will you take the advantage of God's love? Will you allow the word of God to heal you? Will you take the advantage of the work Jesus Christ did on the cross? If only you can abide in him, he also will abide in you. And once Christ abides in you, your addiction will disappear. Because light and darkness cannot cohabit. 
Hallelujah. But your, your cooperation is required. You need to cooperate with Jesus Christ. Let him come to your life. It's not a door for heart now. Thank you for your attention. We remain the open for peace. So if you are blessed with our message or with other messages that you see, please subscribe, like, and share our channel. We need the encouragement. God bless you. Very good.